建議啦。咁 ，Let's continue with our meeting. Please invite the deputations and individuals to come in. First of all, welcome all of you. I'd now like to invite the deputations or individuals to speak. Whether or not they're attending in their personal capacity or not, they'll be given three minutes each. Written submissions as well as oral remarks. Will not be protected by the Electrical Powers and Privileges Ordinance, that is Cap 382. I'd also like to mention that Mr. Paul Chan, the Bureau Director, is otherwise engaged in official duties and will not be able to attend this session. So first, Mr. Mak Chi Kit. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Concerning reclamation and rock cavern development, certain premises have not been resolved. For example, there are demographic assumptions. Hong Kong is not a labor-intensive city. Besides, there's no accurate demographic projection as to whether or not we have such a huge demand for land. As for increased land supply, many people have said that it's not true that Hong Kong does not have land. It's just that our policies are lopsided. Therefore, before I see any convincing policies, I'll not support reclamation and rock cavern development. Let me mention rock cavern development. Ventilation, illumination, environmental issues have to be considered. Otherwise, we're going to pay environmental prices. Human beings understand very little about nature. So it's really arrogant to talk about improving the environment. So should we be led by the engineers? As for construction and demolition wastes, to handle them environmentally, people say that we should use the materials for reclamation. That's, that's putting the cart before the horse. We should handle the wastes in an environmentally friendly manner. So our 
environmental policies are actually very poor. In future, even if we are to have these developments, we must do something about EIA. There is room for improvement in terms of our concepts about em environmental improvement. Let's take the example of the Longmei Beach. A lot of VIA reports were actually self-contradictory. The officials were also self-contradictory. How can you convince us uh, that rock cavern development and reclamation will not do any damage to the marine ecology as well as the Chinese white dolphins in the western part of the harbor? As for sustainability, some engineering employees may be worried about their jobs. We have to look at the overall sustainability of the environment. If our environment has grown to such a state that it does not suit human beings, for example, today is only June, but we have a high temperature as high as 30 degrees Celsius, the environmental engineers cannot just take care of themselves. Next, uh, Mr. Tam Chok Man from Hoyang, Yat Gok. Hong Kong is a small and crowded place. I believe the objective of reclamation and rock cavern development is to produce more land for the construction of commercial and domestic buildings and to promote economic development. But reclamation cannot attain that goal. Is it true that Hong Kong lacks land? Many pieces of land have been left deserted for many years, like the former Kai Tak airport site. So why should we not make use of these deserted land? And the government has continuously allowed mainlanders to come to Hong Kong. If we raise the threshold of immigration for mainlanders, the problem of scarce land and huge population can be solved. And then Hong Kong's housing policy is problematic. Many Hong Kong people cannot buy flats. Many people have been waiting for a long time without getting PRH flats. Many people say that by reclaiming more land, we'll get more housing units. That's not true. Property prices are very high under the speculative activities of the mainlanders. And most land sites have been passed to land developers for the construction of private flats. Even if we are to reclaim the whole harbour, the land will only pass to the land developers for the construction of sites for mainland speculators. Only speculators will benefit. Reclamation is not the solution. We should pluck instead of the loopholes of our housing policy. When we studied at school, we were told not to throw garbage into the sea. Even the government is publicizing the message that we should start with ourselves as far as environmental protection is concerned. So why should the government take the lead to pollute the sea? It's said that some people are worried about reclamation for fear that environment, the environment will be affected and agricultural and fishery resources will be affected. If you dump materials like plastic bags into the sea, then of course, our fishery resources will be affected. So long as we reclaim land, that will be an irreversible action. So reclamation should only be the last resort. Next, Mr. Chong King Leung, a few points. First of all, I oppose reclamation. We should not alter the shoreline. Wu Kai Sha, Tun Moon, and Chang Kwan Oh have a very beautiful natural shoreline with beautiful beaches and so forth. So reclamation will affect the scenery. You say that we have a la lack of land supply. So why can't you convince us? It's because land supply is, to is closely related to demographic growth. The estimation of a future population of 8.8 .8 million people would not be accurate because CY Leung 
has allowed mainlanders to come to Hong Kong. Reclamation and rock cavern development won't be able to address the problem. So we have to identify what sort of land we actually need. We should not blindly do reclamation. Besides, at the beginning, the government wanted a green Hong Kong, but then is now taking the lead to reclaim land. I read from internet messages that the fishermen are very dissatisfied. The fishermen do not understand why the government should take the lead to reclaim land. And this has added to public resentment. And talking about land demand, you should not just rely on reclamation to address that issue. The land developers have actually been hoarding land, etc., etc. They are hoarding first hand properties instead of selling them in order to create a misleading impression that we lack land. So the government should act on the land developers instead of doing reclamation and rock cavern development. And finally, there must be long term policies instead of uh, unlimited reclamation. Next, Mr. Lai Chiu Nam. Mr. Chairman, I support the government's suggestion to adopt a multi pronged approach to increase land supply, including reclamation outside Victoria Hub and rock cavern development. Given our demographic growth as well as long term development, we must have sufficient land reserve to address commercial and residential demands. As for reclamation sites, sufficient measures should be adopted to guard against adverse impact on marine ecology. So the government should listen to more experts and environmentalists. Recently, we heard that Hong Kong's competitiveness has dropped. The high rental level is one of the causes. We should increase more land supply in order to reduce the rental level so that we can restore our competitiveness. In the 1980s, I participated in a number of land formation projects. I deeply felt the importance of land supply to housing supply. At Wafu Estate, I participated in the power line installation program. Now it's called Wa Kwai Estate. Choi Ming Court, Shun Tak Estate, etc. I also participated in those projects. Now we have Choi Tak Estate. The time frame will be be between three to six years. Only the construction works. Are, 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 I'm, I'm talking about the construction works, not about the preparation time. My experience is that once sites were formed, the housing department would be very eager to build PRH flats on them. I had heard some views saying the government reclamation is to serve real estate developers so they can build luxury units. But in my 20 years of experience, the land formation projects that I participated in, 100% of them were public housing or community facilities. I think a land bank uh, is necessary for long, Hong Kong's long-term development. I hope we can strike a balance between conservation and development. So perhaps you can consider if we don't have a, uh, an international airport, if we still relied on Kai Tak, what would uh, Hong Kong be? Mr. Lai Gamwa. We support land reclamation. We can increase the land supply. 
we can relieve urban congestion and we can provide job opportunities and sustainable development. Regarding the five sites and uh, artificial island, we have the following views. In Longgutan, we suggest the West Rail extend to Longgutan and the mass transit system extend to this land reclamation area. We should increase the proportion of public housing and also regarding Siu Wan, we suggest uh, scrapping the toll fee for northern Langtao. The mass transit should connect to the reclamation area. We should have a Siu uh metro station. For private housing, we should have Hong Kong land for Hong Kong people conditions. In Sunny Bay, it's a small area. They need to provide an uh, outline zoning plan. There should be a new railway station in the new area. In Qingyi Southwest, we should retain industrial facilities. We should increase the transport infrastructure. We need to enhance the public housing ratio and for private housing there should be Hong Kong land for Hong Kong people conditions. In Maliu Soil, when the Sha Tin wastewater treatment facility is relocated, there should be a uh, backup plan. There should be connection to East Rail and the Maun San uh, Highway. We should enhance uh, the number of public housing and there should be Hong Kong land for Hong Kong uh, people conditions in private uh, estates. We also need to minimize the impact on the uh, ecology, in which there should also be enhance of industrial safety. There should be more transport network to Langtao. <coughs> there also should be limit uh, on diesel engines and you know, there should be more emphasis on renewable energy. For scattered lots, we suggest uh, there should be uh, more green areas and sitting out areas. In order to enhance the land bank, we support uh, uh, land reclamation. Mr. Law Melon, our company supports land reclamation. We've heard the public and environmental groups, they feel that there is a catastrophe uh, when there's land reclamation. So we need more objective research findings to come to a decision. Regarding reclamation in the western area, We feel there should be a unified study uh, for a period over 10 years. And the study should cover and since I've worked in the industry for a long time, I see the industry changing. Uh, there were reclamation in the 80s in Jungwano. The environmental requirements and compared to today are very different because we need to reduce the impact on the ecology. So there are a lot of restrictions. And we see the industry, the government, uh, evolving over time and providing more mitigation measures. So in the future, through cooperation or studies, we can reduce the impact on the ecology, on sustainable development.
we need land supply to meet different stakeholder needs. So aside from housing, we might need land for other use, not just housing. Uh, for example, industrial use. In the last 10 years, we have stopped reclaiming land. The inert construction material is wasted because over this period, all waste material is sent to a transition storage area, which is then further shipped to western Guangdong. This is a waste of resources. If it could be used to reclaim land, this inert material could be used. Thank you. Mr. Ringo Yu. Uh, Hong Kong IE maintains our will that Hong Kong should not delay any constructive measure to enhance land supply. We opine that Hong Kong should keep a strategic and long-term land supply approach to meet the various developmental needs and to moderate the land market equilibrium. As Hong Kong is tiny and with purely topographic, reclamation would be the most suitable means for providing land reserve. Among various means to form land, it is considered that reclamation does not involve land resumption and resettlement and will have less social impact when, com when compared with other means. The land obtained from reclamation could be extensive so that we can have better land use planning and can use the reclaimed land as reserve for future needs. There are numerous successful development experience of using reclamation to create land for essential construction in Hong Kong over previous years such as the development of various new towns and the Hong Kong International Airport. Only through such continuous provision of land for essential infra infrastructural development could Hong Kong maintain its pace of development to cater for both community need and economic expansion. Hence, reclamation is a successful cornerstone of Hong Kong land development. Reclamation has been widely employed in many countries, such as Singapore and, Jap and Japan, for creating the much-needed land. With careful pre-project planning and implementation, we trust that suitable level of reclamation would bring overall benefits to Hong Kong. We note that the five proposed sites for reclamation outside Victoria Harbour are remote sites and might not cause serious social impact to the resident. Also, these sites are relatively close to environmentally sens close to environment uh, sensitive area which could not afford extra loading. With the implementation of proper mitigation measures, the unfavorable environmental impacts arising from reclamation and that the developments can be suitably contained or mitigated. In regard to the rock cavern development, the Hong Kong IE welcomes the proposal by the administration to vacate the land currently occupied by the reservoir and sewage treatment work plants and relocate this facility to the identified rock cavern sites. As a whole, land supply strategics strategies should be consistent with and complement various policy and public works project that could contribute to the long-term development of Hong Kong. Thank you. Uh, we don't want to repeat viewpoints, but I'd like to show some pictures. I think the Secretariat has already uh, circulated the pictures for the uh, both youngsters born after a the 80s and 90s uh, but for uh, people of my age it generates a lot of feelings this is a Choi Hong estate in the 60s 
we have Wang Dai Xin Estate, Tong Tao Estate, uh, and a lot of squatter areas. Uh, this is a new estate, and it was the housing situation was more severe than today. The second picture, uh, taken in the seventies. At Central, and the sea went all the way to Connaught Road Center, uh, and uh, it, it extended all the way to IFC at Exchange Square, and you can see at the time. The old Legco building, Bank of China building, the government to Hill, and even from HSBC to Star Ferry, uh, the, you can see that development and conservation can work hand in hand. Mm -hmm. The third picture was taken in the 80s, uh, the, uh, from the other side of Lion Rock. Uh, Shatin railway station wasn't even built there. You could see the old Shatian Rural Committee. So these pictures illustrate Hong Kong needs to develop to, to meet future needs. Otherwise, uh, our neighboring regions and countries will catch up with us. Of course, uh, development doesn't override everything. In developing land, we can work with urban planning, conservation experts, and seek a thorough uh, plan. So I hope that uh, we can work together and achieve the Chinese dream. Mr. Kwok Yim, regarding reclamation and rock cavern development, I, I support that. According to the Chinese City Competitive Index, Hong Kong relies on finance and real estate, but uh, land supply and housing supply is uh, insufficient. If we look at other statistics, Hong Kong has 220,000 public housing applicants and 170,000 subdivided flat tenants and we see that the population is going to grow to 9 million. Hong Kong real estate uh, is also driving away uh, expatriates. So we need a stable land supply, uh, a land bank, and we also need to increase supply in the private sector. In the past there was no land bank, so uh, the government uh, is at a loss. Uh, 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 its hands are tied when in the face of high land, high property prices. Well, we need to increase land supply through urban renewal, land resumption, change of land use, uh, the development of rock caverns, resumption of new territories land is timely. Cool and it cannot resolve immediate problems. And in releasing land in the NT, there's a lot of opposition. The indigenous villages uh, have conflicting demands. And some people are also against developing new towns. So we, uh, a lot of agricultural land is left idle or it is converted to other use such as a container terminal storage. In the process there are also a lot of unknown factors, opposition, conservation, uh, and uh, there are different collective memory demands. If there are any changes in the 10 year process the, the project might be scaled down or even scrapped. So. In light of all these factors, reclamation outside Victoria Harbour and 
cabin development have are the most simple direct way to increase land supply. The extra land could supply the private sector to stabilize prices. You, we can also develop public housing and shorten the queue. Objectives have various reasons, but I think these can be overcome through mitigation measures, through environmental impact assessment, and reduced to an acceptable level. Our competitor also relies on our competitor Singapore also relies on reclamation. Okay, time's up. Mr. Herrick Kong from Student Union of Chinese University of Hong Kong. We strongly object to reclamation in Maliosoy. We had at the end of March Uh, collected 3,500 signatures on the internet and 1,500 signatures, uh, physical signatures from our campus students and teachers. Just now, we were mentioned we have a lot of idle land, uh, land for indigenous villages. Population growth. Every day we have. Uh, we have uh, a single permit, uh, single entry permit uh, uh, arrivals. So reclamation does it really solve the housing problem? If you look at planning. Mali Usui is the only site that has housing plans. Uh, Dong Chong, Siu Ho Wan are f for commercial and infrastructure purposes. It doesn't resolve the housing problem. Uh, one important point why we object to reclamation is we want to focus on man and nature. I don't think the engineers uh, can solve this problem. In Chinese U, we have a lot of uh, birds and flowers. This is very rare in Hong Kong. S uh, since we don't appreciate it, shouldn't we cherish it more? Uh, C is also very important. The CU faces Tolo Harbor and had a lot of uh, masters uh, expressing their love for the beauty of Tolo Harbor. Uh, if Tolo Harbor is reclaimed, wouldn't that be a pity? So before reclaiming land, you sh the government should consider the relationship between man and nature. Uh, reclamation is irreversible. Uh, we, our pursuit of development, uh, shouldn't we also uh, consider uh, uh, pr protecting the harbor? Is not just Victoria Harbor. We need to protect our different uh, beautiful sites. All right, Changing. Next, we have. Mr. Michael Wong Keen from the Charter Institution of Civil Engineers. Our institution supports the government's proposed six-pronged approach to increase land supply in order to build up a sufficient land reserve and to satisfy the long-term housing demand. We support the proposal for reclamation in the five near <coughs> shore areas and also the proposal, uh, the pilot proposal for, for rock cavern development. During phase one of the public engagement exercise, I understand the public's uh, controversy over the proposed reclamation, but I think reclamation not only can help increase land reserve, we can also make good use of the uh, construction waste uh, for reclamation and also 
minimize the carbon emission because of the need to transport or ship the uh, uh, construction waste materials. Actually, the per capita living space is only a uh, uh, you know 150 square feet. Singapore is 300. Uh, is 399 in the rural areas, the mainland, and 350 in the urban areas. So we have the smallest per capita living space. Pro proper land reserve and new supply of land will enable the SAR government to control the supply of uh, residential units in order to relieve the pressure on property prices. So we would like to make the following uh, mm. proposals. First of all, the waste materials generated from projects and works in Hong Kong should be dealt with, uh, you know, in a sustainable manner. I don't think we can continue forever to, to, to simply ship them to Toy Shan. I think we should have a, a close hoarding method of reclamation in order to minimize the impact of uh, reclamation. Thirdly, we should, I think we should consider <coughs> reclamation uh, linking up the nearshore area with uh, islands. And fourthly, we should have further assessments uh, into the viability of uh, reclamation and come up with more detailed design. Fifthly, we should adopt innovative uh, reclamation technologies and stringently, you know, Pro uh, forbid the damage to the natural shorelines in order to protect the ecology. Also, we should adopt strategic measures to prevent the uh, <clears throat> damage of the environment. We support a long-term, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, approach to for reclamation and rock cavern development in order to improve the quality of life and living gener uh, conditions of our next generation. Next, we have Mr. Ho Kwan Yeo from the Timun Rural Committee. Thank you. For our long-term development, uh, we need reclamation and we support that as well. But as well to not, reclamation is the only option. This is really de debatable. In Hong Kong, we have a total area of 1,100 square kilometers, and we less than half of which are, are, are developed. Of course, if we divide Hong Kong into four areas, it, uh, the northeast is our back garden, and we want to protect that, and that is understandable. To the southeast, I think it's uh, most of the land already developed, and in the NT, uh, in, uh, I think we could develop, you know, in places like Sai Kung. So what is left is the location between six o'clock and twelve uh, mm. o'clock, mainly the southwest and the southern part of the territory. So do we can we go for recommendation these five districts to resolve the needs for our long term development? We do not think so. Earlier, the rural committees of our uh, uh, of the uh, uh, Long Kutan has already stated its position. Uh, for. We do not think that we should, uh, you know, change a natural shoreline arbitrarily, and the uh, and the rationale for that has already been fully, you know, recorded in the litigation uh, earlier. So regarding the five uh, uh, proposal, five options for uh, recreation, I think that is unacceptable because we have more than 50 percent of our land uh, which have not yet been used, even leaving aside the back garden, Sai Kung. We still have the south, southwestern and the northwestern part. The largest area in to the southwest is the Lantau Island, with 147.6 square kilometers. In, of, why don't we consider land uh, on on the island and consider instead to reclaim land out of the ocean? I think that we seem to be putting the cart before the horse. Regarding the development. Uh, option for land tower. I don't understand the government's, uh, you know, uh, intention. In 1994, I think there was already a study uh, as to how we can enhance the development of land tower. In your present report and assessment, you've not m mentioned that. On uh, land tower, we are already building the third runway. Even for the north and southern part, we divide land tower into the north and southern part. We put the more offensive trades in the north, and, and the southern part is, is, is could be made into a beautiful area. So we should proceed. If we want to enhance land supply, I don't think we should uh, choose uh, recommendation. After the Mahato case, the, the, there are many open spaces in the new territories. After then, uh, then the town planning ordinance, which was put on hold in 1990, had there been any improvements? No. So in the long term, we need a plan. We should, at the appropriate time, consider letter B and the uh, uh, 
uh, village house pro uh, policy promulgated in 1972. Thank you. Next, Mr. Ng Man from the Conservancy Association. I'd just like to make two major points. Firstly, we hope that the government will first, uh, you know, complete uh, certain conservation works first. In the policy address this year, the government has already told us that uh, it should follow the uh, the UN Convention to pro come up with a biodiversity policy and action plan. The Environmental Bureau is already conducting uh, a public consultation on the subject. The uh, I think uh, the reclamation proposal and the conservation of the ocean are, are two interlinked uh, issues. I don't know why the Environmental Bureau is now uh, 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 putting forward these proposals and they only focus on the mitigating measures. And that what it's uh, doing seems to be going against what the Environmental Bureau is doing. I think to look at the uh, the uh, reclamation issue in, in a proper perspective, I think the two bureaus should work together. We should uh, come up with a strategic objective for the protection of certain species, and we also restrict the use of ocean resources and set up more marine conservation areas. The government should state the facts and to explain to the people of Hong Kong how we can ensure that the environment will not be adversely affected by the reclamation works. Secondly, we often emphasize the need for a strategic uh, environmental impact assessment. If you look at the proposed sites, uh, most of them are loca located in the western uh, waters of Hong Kong. And in these areas, there are already many works being uh, carried out or which have been planned, including the Hong Kong Macau Drive Bridge, the extension of the Tong Chong New Town, the third runway. All these projects uh, will create a cumulative effect. And we wonder how, how, how much pressure that will put on our ocean. And the government has not come up with any, any, uh, you know, any, any uh, uh, convincing arguments. Uh, so other than dealing with the cumulative impact of these projects, uh, I think the question of sustainable development is also involved. So I think in the process we have to ask what policies we need, what changes are necessary, and how they relate to the other policies. Regarding the controversy on the third runway, we have advocated to conduct a strategic uh, environmental impact assessment uh, rather than uh, simply relying on the EIA. Uh, uh, we now have six proposed sites for reclamation. The government should actually expand the scope of the uh, environmental impact assessment study and extend it to the southern and middle part of our waters. Other than cons the conservation of the ocean, we should also consider the impact on air, the question of noise, and so on. The government should uh, put forward proposals, mitigating proposals before they would uh, uh, proceed further. Thank you. Next, Mr. Lo Ken Yip. For the long-term development of Hong Kong and to improve the living con condition for our next generation, I support the proposal to build up a land reserve. We've heard that we have uh, uh, 150,000 people living in subdivided flats without water supply and so on. The conditions are even worse than what it was like in the resettlement areas in the 1970s. We also have 220,000 people on the waiting list for PRH. And we've also, uh, I think most people in Hong Kong agree that we should expedite the production of IPRH units. When the government consults the public, there are objections saying that um, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, on grounds of feng shui, uh, ventilation, transport facilities, and so on. And the media uh, has pointed out that people are worried that this might have an impact on property prices. Sometimes even the PRH residents nearby object to the building of more uh, public housing units. If all of us don't want uh, new developments uh, next to our home and if, uh, don't want a recommendation, how can we have the land to build uh, residential units? Next, regarding Malaysia, is next to the University in the Science Park. And, and also, uh, there is a proposal to move this shotting sewage treatment plant so that we can use this, the, the uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you know the site instead for the redevelopment and move the plant into a rock cavern. So the new land could be linked up with the Shatin Central Line and the Mount Shan uh, Line. So the newly uh, created land can actually 
complement uh, the Shine Park and, and the Chinese University, so that regarding a reclaim reclamation near Malu Shui, there has been strong objection, which is understandable. People are worried about the impact on the <coughs> scenery, the property prices, and so on. So I'd like to suggest the government should, at the planning stage, come up with a systematic method of collecting uh, the views of the public, assess such views uh, properly, so that the project will not affect the culture of the district and allay the concerns of the residents. So I hope there will be communication uh, and, the, and the government will adopt an open mind to deal with this matter. I grew up in Songok Estate, which is not built on reclaimed land, but many of my friends live in Cheong Shawan and Cheong Chao Estate. Uh, our previous generation actually were able to, you know, <clears throat> leverage on the spirit of mutual uh, cooperation. But now, uh, our, the, the queue for the PRH is getting longer and longer. Uh, young people are not having, <clears throat> uh, will not, uh, cannot afford uh, their own uh, housing units and have to live in some other flats. So I think we should do more uh, and explore further the option of uh, uh, reclamation in order to create land. Next, we have uh, Mr. Cheng Silun. The government has indicated that to cope with the, the rising demand for housing and the provision of public facilities, the government will uh, proceed for reclamation outside of Victoria Harbour and to develop rock caverns. The sites involved uh, include Longkutan, Xiongwan, and south southwest of uh, Chengyi, Ma Liu Shun. And for rock cavern development, they propose Shaikung, Shenzhen, and the Sha Tin Shu treatment plant. The future land and population growth are inter interrelated with our economy. The government would need to assess carefully where to not uh, the projected population growth uh, of the, in the population of Hong Kong. We know that reclamation will cause damage to the natural environment, which are irreversible, so the government will need to be cautious. It is a pity that in the past, when the government projected the population of Hong Kong, they have records. Uh, they, they, it is, uh, they have made mistakes. In 1980, they projected that uh, Hong Kong population will go up to 8.4 million, but, but now we only have 7.7. .7. We are worried that in future, if we're going to overestimate the, the population growth for Hong Kong and the and the concomitant economic uh, uh, demand. Our natural environment will be subject to unnecessary damage. These such unrealistic population policies, if the government exaggerate the need for public for, for housing the, the needs and infrastructures. And in Hong Kong we have not have a proper strategy on how we on, on land use. For example, the government does not have a policy regarding um, private land which are left idle. In other words, land could be hoarded on a massive scale. In the rural areas uh, there are many container, container storage yards oh, and, and open storage yards. To cope with the future population growth and housing demand, the government can actually focus on such land which are already developed or which are left vacant and idle, instead of going for reclamation, which will cause irreversible damages. The village house policy has caused the limited the the, the, space, the the area space in the rural area to be put to only limited use. Uh, we also have uh, uh, sites, uh, uh, government quarters uh, uh, on site, uh, the sites of which could be developed. Recently, many foreign companies are not setting up the headquarters in Hong Kong exactly because uh, we do not really attach importance to uh, protecting our environment. Uh, uh, there is no accurate population projection. We have not no plan to make optimum use of our land. Does rec is recognition really beneficial to the community? We know that the, some of the proposed sites, including Long Gutan and Xiong Xiuwan, are areas frequented by the Chinese dolphins. Uh, do we have to pay the price of environmental damage? Uh, we hope that uh, land development and population growth should be based on objective statistical uh, uh, facts. Otherwise, uh, we find it difficult to support the government's policy. Next, Mr. Chen Kalong. First of all, I'd like to respond to one uh, Mr. Wong Keen, who represents the uh, Charter Institute of uh, uh, civil engineering surveyors. He said that with the projects where the, we generate a lot of waste materials which could be used for reclamation, after which land could be formed. So what's going to happen to the land? 
uh, well, you have to, you know, build, you know, uh, erect buildings on such sites, and what's going to happen uh, to the waste materials which are further generated in the course of construction of the new uh, buildings. So, so, so first of all, we have to ask whether or not we need so many large-scale infrastructural projects. We have lost a lot of money because we are building the XRL. A lot of you know, draw, uh, a lot of silt has been dredged out un from underground, and then what's going to happen to the waste material? They're used for reclamation. For reclamation. So we keep repeating the same uh, mistake and go for in you know uh, continuous reclamation. We say there is no enough land for housing development, for for and uh, not enough land for to build PR units, and now the government is saying that they will reclaim the land to build public housing. But but the government has not <coughs> always, you know, as a record of not, you know, keeping its words. Uh, the government claims, uh, said that they needed to, to have recognition for the central. They want to return the water promenade to the people after they obtained the 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 the. the the green light. They are now telling us that the PLA needs to use our pier, uh, and they are now returning the, the you know that part of the land to to the communist uh, government. The government take away the land. They they got the green light for reclamation now, and and now that part of the ocean is gone. Uh, we don't have land to build PRH. What what happened to the home and to the estate? The PLH blocks have been demolished, and the land is being sold to private developers to build luxury units. Do we is it really the case that we don't have land that we must go for reclamation and rock cavern development? That is not true, except that the residents are now uh, you know wanting want to move into PRH units, and as a result, the government is selling the, our land at the cheap prices to the developers, and then the rich people from the mainland come to Hong Kong and buy them up for speculation. So the question I'd like to ask is, why is it that people in Hong Kong don't have, uh, can't afford to, house, uh, to, to buy their own housing units? It's because we don't have a population policy. I certainly am against uh, reclamation and the rock cavern development proposal. Next, uh, Ms. Hei Xin Hang. Either as a Timon resident, as a resident of Hong Kong, I object the proposed uh, reclamation. As a resident of Tin Moon, I am against uh, the proposed reclamation at Long Kutan. In the constitution paper, it is state, uh, we understand that the scope of the reclamation is next to the power plant. I don't think we should in increase the the, uh, the building density or the population density there. And the government has not put, but told us what is the purpose of the land to be reclaimed. It will only be put into the land reserve. So this is uh, typically short-sighted you know, policy. And we're not just concerned about the coastline of, uh, of uh, Timbun and the white dolphins there. We care about the whole ecology of Hong Kong and whether or not our, the existing land is being used op optimally. So in the course of development, we should avoid reclamation and rock cavern, cavern development in order that there will not be any irreversible damages. I attended the public engagement exercise in Shekit May, and some definition uh, talked said that after reclamation, the dolphins and other living creatures will leave the area. But we all know that a particular species would stay to a stick's habitat, just like the people of Hong Kong will not easily emigrate. Many people have criticized the green groups of being selfish, but in fact, all of us have our own aspirations, and all of us, uh, what could say, every one of us are selfish. Except I'm selfish uh, uh, in the sense that I want to live in harmony with with the environment and and a home that I can live comfortably in. The environment belongs to all the people of Hong Kong. It's not private property, so we should make good use of existing land sites like those in Ho Mountain and Kai Tak. We should not blindly create new sites. That's affecting Hong Kong people's health. I'd like to point out that we always have long-term worries. So in the long run, we must have the correct demographic policies. Otherwise, we'll only be benefiting the transportation industry, the land development industry, in the short term, and 
rock cavern development should only be a last resort. Next, uh, from these, Ms. Toka Wan, external vice chairman of Environmental Life Science Society, Science Society, the Hong Kong University Students' Union. Like other green groups, we oppose the proposed reclamation policy, which will hugely damage our marine ecology. In particular, Longku Tan, Siu Ho Wan, and Yan O are important habitats of the Chinese white dolphins. So it's not just a one off damage. Those works underway and future works will damage our ecology. For example, the reclamation works of Hong Kong Macau Juhai Bridge, the third runway, and the reclamation in Tong Chong. All these will hugely damage our marine ecology. The number of uh, Chinese white dolphins have dropped from 158 in 2008 to 30-odd, to 70-odd at present. And damaging works are underway. So in future, how will they be affected? We should balance development and conservation. But conservation is essential. We are told that there are objectives to these development projects. We do not have sufficient land, and there are a lot of social problems that have to be solved by increased land supply. But then we'll be continuously damaging the environment. Have we struck the right balance? The overall policy of the government must match the Biodiversity Convention, which was extended to Hong Kong in 2011. Before 2015, Hong Kong has to do planning works. There should be a process, and we have to have a draft plan. We must have policies and action plan for biodiversity so as to maintain biodiversity. That's an international convention which is being adopted by many jurisdictions. But we are doing something in the opposite. We say that we need a lot of works projects to meet social demands. Does that mean that our society should be engaged in self-contradictory planning? I can see that the planning department would like to conserve the ecology, just like the recent trawl ban. I hope that the government will contribute to environmental protection as well. Next, Mr. Stephen Chick from Engineering Forum Limited. Mr. Chairman, we should take the lead in planning for environment. In terms of planning, we have taken good care of our environment. But the effective area for construction has actually been reduced. At the same time, creative industries are suffering from high rent and their room of survival is diminishing. Rehabilitation facilities and other facilities cannot be accommodated. So the engineering sector supports the government's arrangement in adopting a multi-pronged approach to reclaim land beyond the Victoria Harbour or develop cavern, rock caverns to meet the demand for land. For a city to develop sufficient land resources will satisfy housing, economic and social aspirations. At present, Modern reclamation methods can greatly reduce the impact on environment and ecology. In Hong Kong and other jurisdictions with concrete examples, I hope that these concrete examples will be adopted to the five proposed sites in the consultation document. 
after reclamation, existing social facilities can be moved to more remote areas so as to vacate land in the urban areas for other purposes. In Sha Tin, Maliu Shui is rather controversial, but in fact, Sha Tin was also reclaimed. Now, with a variety of PRH flats, private flats, hospitals, and other social facilities, we believe that through better planning, through larger land sites, we'll be able to do better planning. Then, for the community and environment, we can carry out certain assessments to take into account demands from different sectors of the community so we can have long-term planning for reclamation. Concerning the proposed reclamation in the central waters, we hope that the government can do EIA well as well as conduct an ecological study. But these added land sites will address Hong Kong's long-term land demand and create great opportunities for various facilities to satisfy the needs of different sectors of the community. For rock caverns, sewage treatment works can be moved into them, and other beautiful facilities can also be used. That's my response. Thank you. Next, Mr. Alex Chan. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Officials, good afternoon. I'm only a Manchan resident. I'd like to say that I do not support the proposed Maliu Shui reclamation. Why? Wharf Center in North Point is 25 stories high. The government would like to have as many flats as possible with excellent sea view. And all the seven blocks were linked together thus blocking sunlight and fresh air. If 30 to 34 stories are to be built on reclaimed land in Maliu Shui, how will the existing residents be affected? Not just Maliu Shui residents will be affected. Shatin residents will also be affected. Now, at Shatin and Maliu Shui, they are providing ventilation to Taiwan. If Maliu Shui and Sha Tin are to be blocked, Taiwai will become a replication of Tin Shui Wai, and that's irreversible. Human beings can master everything on the earth. I really don't understand why we should neglect the environment. We are human beings with wisdom and emotions. The values of certain people may be that human lives are not as valuable as Chinese white dolphins. The government wants to reclaim land in the vicinity, but some people want to think about the white dolphins first before thinking about Shatin residents. So what's the value of Shatin residents in the eyes of the government? Besides, Ma Anshan is already a very, very well-designed community. If I'm to give it a score, I may give it 90 to 100 marks. Unfortunately, recently, the government proposed to have reclamation in Ma Anshan. That's really redundant. It won't tie in with the surrounding environment. The government is even giving our residents the feeling that the government is finding land for the sake of finding land. There's no commitment, no planning. The government just lay hands on the most convenient locations. We very much support government plans. For example, the relocation plan for the Shatin sewage treatment plant may impact on road traffic, pollution, etc. But then we remained silent. Unfortunately, the government is trying to do more. It wants to take the site of the sewage treatment works and at the same time reclaim land in Maliu Shui. It's just like uh, slapping you on your body and then give you a hit 
on the head. So we oppose the Ma Liu Shui reclamation plan. Next, Mr. Henry Lai from Sun Fok Kong Civil Limited. Good afternoon, everybody. I represent Sun Fok Kong. I'm Lai. Hong Kong is an international city and marine center. The demand for commercial sites will increase. The population is to grow, so there will be an increased demand for PRH flats, etc. But land supply is limited. You can hear people's housing aspirations everywhere. So I'm of the view that the government should effectively make use of land, old buildings, high density buildings and dilapidated buildings should be resumed and redeveloped for the development of public and private housing that will boost housing supply. The government should also improve the road networks, develop large scale transport infrastructure and move the population to more remote areas in the new territories. So in the long run, suitable reclamation can boost land supply. I think that's feasible. The pretext is not to damage marine resources and to protect marine ecology. Given that premise, I am positive on the government's proposals. Thank you. Next. Mr. Yao Kin Wo from Sun Gai Hong Chin Fat Jin Lun Jake Wu Yi. Good afternoon, Chairman, officials, and friends. The consultation document is controversial mostly because reclamation outside Victoria Harbour is proposed. I have reservation of uncertain proposed sites. Given our topography constraints, many developed CBD areas like uh, Central Wan Chai and New Towns and the two airports, old and new airports, were actually from reclaimed land. In Hong Kong, if we never had reclamation, we would not have achieved so much. But now we're in an acute shortage of land. Property prices and rentals have remained very high. So there are livelihood problems and our competitiveness has been affected. Apart from providing more industrial and commercial floor areas, reclamation can also create jobs. Yes, environmental protection is our concern. The government has to be cautious and strike a balance between development and conservation. New reclamation methods should be adopted to reduce the impact on water quality. For example, for the Hong Kong Macau Jui Bridge, modern technology is used. It's more expensive than the conventional methods. But given a reserve of $700 billion, the government can afford it. Our road networks will not be able to suit long-term needs. Take the proposed Malu Show reclamation. Let's not talk about view and ventilation for Chinese University. The East Rail is saturated. In future, when Sha Tin Central Link is commissioned, the number of cars per train will be, increased, will be de reduced from 12 to 9, thus adding to the burden. So Ma Liu Shui reclamation should be shelved, and we must long-term blueprint for reclamation with restriction on building height, building density, in order to ease public worries. Many people say that Hong Kong still have undeveloped land. But then when the government proposed to develop NT Northeast, there's opposition. Hong Shui Ku projects met with opposition. Urban redevelopment projects were set to be damaging our local characteristics. So there's opposition. You cannot have the best of both worlds. I hope that the opponents can be more realistic. We must have pragmatic and practicable promo proposals for increasing land supply. Mr. Chiu Man Leung from Shatin District Council member. I'm Chiu Man Leung, a convener from the Shatin District Council. We can see that Ma Liu Show Reclamation will be able to provide a 400 meter long ventilation corridor. But Shing River 
has an 800 meter ventilation corridor. That means half will be blocked. Let me show you two maps. Now, this is the present situation. Wind can easily enter the town center of Sha Tin. After the Maliu Shui reclamation, the ventilation corridor will be blocked by tall buildings, and Sha Tin Town Center would get very little fresh air. So to reclaim land in Maliu Shui, we'll see high blocks of buildings blocking ventilation and pollutants cannot be dispersed. And then we'll be surrounded on three sides by mountains. Is even more serious than the screening effect of top buildings. The reclaimed land will see a population of 700,000 people. But Shatin is already densely populated. Many trunk routes are very congested. Taipo Road has a long queue up to the Jockey Club. The queuing time at Princess, Prince of Wales Hospital is long, sometimes up to 10 hours in the A&E department. We cannot have large-scale reclamation anymore. We conducted a survey with 94% of residents opposing Malaysia reclamation. We received 1,260 signatures from the residents and 5,000 signatures from Chinese University. Even for Wu Kai Sha, we did not have so many signatures. One very important criterion to justify reclamation is the impact on the local communities. Public opinion is an important indicator to shut in Man Shan and NT East. Tolo Harbour is as important as Victoria Harbour. Maliu Shui is the smallest amongst the five proposed sites for reclamation. I hope that you can treasure public opinion and treasure this Tolo Harbour view. Next, we have Mr. Henry Lokayu from the Incorporated Owners of La Costa. Mr. Chairman, I'm not an expert. I'm not a professional. I'm not an engineer. I'm just a local resident. I received this public consultation document. I think the content is rather strange and bizarre. We collected 900 signatures from the small number of households in our estate. The main tune is reclamation. The government mentions 400 hectares of land. But according to information from councillors, 1,000 hectares from land developers, and then 2,000 odd hectares from STTs. But only 30 to 60 hectares will be reclaimed. I asked why 30. I was told that there will be 60 to attain a synergy effect. So I really can't explain the document to others. I tried to tell my wife who studied geography, but she said that even at the secondary school level, she was told that reclamation is irreversible. I've never seen anybody diving into the sea to dig out the mud underneath reclaimed land. So why should we not opt for an easier method? It said that Shatin has a population of 600,000 people. I think the writer of the document does not live in Shatin. What is Shatin? In the town center, you have the famous brands. We have very little land that is really closely related to the livelihood of the ordinary people. Beside in the gold rush, they like to visit Shatin to buy jewelry. In the Shatin Central Link, it goes from Daiwai. Uh, we are at the university station. Well, we just cannot board. And I think it will get, just get worse in the future. In Xingmun River, 
a lot of work has been done. They were, uh, but you cannot guarantee that after the reclamation, the pollution will get worse. Uh, we used to have a promenade. Uh, it was an open area, recreational area. Uh, people from Kowloon also come to ride the bicycles. And lastly, I. Uh, so when professionals they draw diagrams, you are affecting our natural resources. Mr. Lun Hoiwa, Mr. Paul Chan in his blog, he said uh, Singapore reclamation was very successful, but Singapore. Uh, based its reclamation work on population forecasts. So, in Hong Kong, we don't even have a white paper on demographics, uh, but we want to imitate Singapore in reclaiming land. It's uh, ridiculous. So, if the Secretary wants to imitate Singapore, then you should uh, produce a population wide paper before you talk about land reclamation. From round one of consultation up to now, the government has not mentioned its plans. Has there been any planning? How can we believe? that it's beneficial to the public. If the government says it, they want to build a land bank, uh, that is putting the cart before the horse. Singapore has the experience of a demographic policy before reclaiming land. So the government should forecast uh, should have a population forecast, but the census and statistics always gets it wrong. So leg legislators should be familiar where the census has got the, the figures wrong. There is no shortage of land in Hong Kong. We have some 8,000 hectares, including uh, uh, idle land, short-term lease, and uh, New Territories land. If we don't have an environmental assessment, a demographic study, then reclaiming land is reclaiming land is like writing a blank check. The Stockton residents are against reclamation. Mm. The signature campaign, the mm. signatures collected from estates indicate that Shatin residents reject land reclamation. We also mentioned the uh, Kowloon East Railway system. The Kowloon East is very crowded. I think uh, the uh, a speaker has not taken the column, East Column Rail. Uh, we object. Uh, next, Miss Yip Ngawing. We've heard about the impact of. Uh, so let's talk about why I object to land reclamation in Mali Usoi. You have five selected sites, but Mali Usoi uh, is the only area with residential projects and schools. So this has already contravened your principle. That is the impact to the community, the environment uh, impact. Why do you continue? In March 2011 and on 21st of January 2013, you said there were three facilities uh, that could be relocated to Cavan. They are the wastewater treatment facilities. But on uh, May 2012, 
why did the Shatin Waste Water Treatment Facility, uh, Wastewater Treatment Facility, have to be relocated? There is a primary school residential area. Is it because of reclamation? You have to relocate the wastewater treatment facility. There was a reason to relocate the wastewater facility. People can move houses, but people uh, will also relocate back. So they will have to, and students cannot relocate, they will ha have to be affected by odor. So is it worthwhile? The construction waste and sludge, it's so close to our residential area. So we should be protected just as well as dolphins. Why do we have to have reclamation in Mali Usai? Why does the government have to do that? Even though the government can make policies, but they need to hear they need to hear about public opinion. You have almost 100% objections. It's very disappointing. Just now I heard a lot of construction workers, engineers support this. It's because you want, like job opportunities. But you're destroying our shoreline. We have a concrete jungle a artificial island why can't that be considered thank you very much next Ms. Yam Long Yan I do not object development uh, we need transport infrastructure but reclamation is not the only solution I want to say we have 38 square kilometers that is idle or reserve, reserve, reserved for other use. This can be used uh, for development. You don't have to reclaim land from an environmental perspective. Uh, a lot of this land has high ecological value. We have uh, Chinese white dolphins. Uh, the, they are very sensitive to noise. If we develop there, it is a very large impact. Just now, a speaker mentioned that uh, the Chinese white dolphin population has halved. So it will dis. It will have a large negative impact on on the in the 2013 competitive index a lot of the media focus on economic development they investigated 60 regions Hong Kong was ranked 59 it's uh, second last so We should not just focus on economic development. We have the. F we always talk about having Hong Kong having a lot of people and a, a very scarce land resources, but every day we have a hundred people coming to Hong Kong permanently. Uh, we allow mainland women to deliver in Hong Kong, but we see now. The population is growing. According to in twenty thirty nine, we will have a population of eight point nine million.
the Hong Kong government doesn't have a long-term policy. They will be create a lot of housing, education, traffic problems. So Hong Kong needs a uh, long-term decision. So uh, reclamation is not the only solution. Ms. Lei Gamwa. I'd like to talk about my experience. Uh, we're talking about long term, 50 years, 100 years. It will have an impact on the public. That's why we need discussions. I'd like to share my experience, first of all. Tolo Harbor. In 1977, I was a high school student. I was windsurfing. We could, I could see the Plover Cove Reservoir being built. There was a large impact on the... Uh, but. But water shortages uh, were very severe. But 40 years hence, the whole area is now a very important uh, And if you look at the reservoir, its value has uh, decreased. If you want to build a reservoir now, people will object. Uh, they would rather purchase water from the mainland. So we can see different people, different, uh, we cannot look at it from uh, the Taipo resident, the Shatin resident view, you have to look at the, the Hong Kong development. Therefore, we should have a, a rational approach and We look at a long-term benefits and long-term solution. At least 50 years, we need to create a conducive conditions to create a better future for our grandchildren. Just now, I heard a very scientific opinion. I just want to share some of my views. Next. Mr. Long Yu Tong, Chairman, basically I support the direction and method. I've heard a lot of objections. It's about uh, methodology of creating land. In distribution of land resources, we don't have enough uh, views. The, uh, the objector says, uh, I, I, I have no participation, why should I support that? So I have a suggestion. Let me call it Land Development uh, uh, List Registration System. This might not be a comprehensive term, I just made it up. Uh, it's very simple. Those interested who qualify, uh, who meet the government requirements, they just need to describe their land use and site selection. They can participate in an open tender. So whether you want to fill, uh, you want to build an artificial island. You want to build a NIMBY facility, or you want to create job opportunities, uh, you want to build an underground cabin, the government, as long as it is of the view that it is conducive to long-term development, it creates job opportunities and they can choose the winning tender and within a certain 
period, the tender winner will have to seek stakeholder support and through a judiciary uh, process uh, they have to develop the land resources then it will not be led by commercial decisions uh, then we'll see more opportunities for different land uh, development we cannot just rely on blind investment then our stakeholders can balance their different needs I'm not saying that real estate developers don't have a social function but we need to open the door to allow industries or communities to seek their solution Mr. Chung Gunman First of all, I support reclamation outside Victoria Harbor. Hong Kong supports more than 7 million people. So I encourage the government to undertake long, medium term plans. So I think uh, it will expend a lot of effort uh, to solve these problems. You can look at in Chihin Hoi, there are some references there. We also need some solutions such as Ching Yi Island or Ching Yi South, even though it's uh, industrial land. But given such uh, comprehensive transport uh, uh, functions, the whole is a very large tract of land for development and it can take care of a lot of needs. New towns, I disagree with new towns being, uh, uh, to being built for government housing because we cannot have which we should have diverse development there should be a mix of public housing and private housing education facilities and medical facilities we have a good transport system so I can see areas along the uh, transport network need to be developed we are a modern city but uh, living conditions are very cramped in Singapore, average uh, areas are 94 uh, square meters. Hong Kong is only average of 45. We have very cramped living conditions. We, uh, and the, the, uh, the, the queue for public housing has already exceeded 200,000. A lot of university stu students are already queuing up. A uh, recent report says that there are more than 170,000 people living in subdivided flats. So you can see <coughs> the problem is very severe. So in the medium to long term, uh, this is a very important development. I also have one point to mention that everybody has their favorite topic or objection. But when we consider the whole of Hong Kong as our home, some sacrifice is necessary. Uh, Plover Cove uh, uh, is an example. Hi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I've worked in Hong Kong for 36 years as a civil engineer, and uh, I'd like to uh, say that I support the government and its coordinated approach in the onshore and uh, offshore development of, of land supply. In particular, it offers an opportunity for management of uh, uh, construction materials. We have a problem at the moment with, uh, with fill banks. The accrual of fill seems to be uh, exceeding the, the rate at which we can use it. So, so to coordinate onshore and offshore development is certainly one way around this problem. The proposals for caverns, I support the use 
uh, of, of underground storage uh, to, to remove reservoirs and sewage treatment works, these sort of so-called offensive trades uh, out, of the, out of the public uh, domain and to use the land that they leave behind for, for reclamation is, is a sound principle. Uh, for reclamation, I think it's, I think it's um, uh, commendable that uh, government is trying as far as it can to avoid the use of uh, natural or to reclaim against natural shorelines. I think four of the five uh, proposals at the moment under consideration do so. I'm not so sure about Lung Town. I, I, I have uh, some reservations about that particular area. Um, I would, I'd imagine that the, the, the best use of the reclamations will be for residential with some commercial or logistical use. Um, where they're near shore avoid uh, uh, industrial use. I think they should also take advantage to recognize these new waterfronts which they create as potential rec recreational resources and develop them accordingly and preserve them accordingly. Um, recently we've seen a lot of new environment friendly reclamation techniques come, in, come into the fore in Hong Kong. They're in, they're in use on the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge both in the Pearl River Delta and at the Boundary Crossing Facility. They're being considered on other reclamations now for the airport and for Tunmun Crossing. I think this will help in terms of environmental impact and mitigation um, and will improve the, the public perception of reclamation as we go forward. Um, artificial islands are not really the most efficient way of doing a reclamation, but uh, they, they do have their uses. I would suggest that um, the, the, uh, the, the rendering in the brochure shows a, an example from Singapore of a nice palm tree uh, and revetment uh, area. I think they could be used possibly for, for more practical uses as well, such as petrochemical storage. Um, if we considered that as, a, as an option, we could certainly release a lot of land in southwest Chingyi in addition to the proposals to reclaim in that area. Um, we also have an opportunity to use artificial islands for landfill. I mean, we've used landfill in a marine environment before in Hong Kong, and here's a chance with lessons learned to make a better job of it in areas that are remote from, from public development, where we can see at the moment it's controversial. Um, the, the artificial islands themselves can be used for recreation. If we're going to build an island, let's, let's include recreational boating facilities as a shortage of marinas. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, for the deputations and individuals who have brought along your submissions, please write down your name and leave it to our staff before you you go, so that we can <coughs> accurately understand your your submissions. It's now 4:15, and it's now time for members to ask questions. Four members: Emily Lau. Albert Ho, Ellen Leung, and Dr. Kwok. May I ask whether there are other members who would like to ask questions? Uh, and <clears throat> Dr. Chen Kalok, we have five members. Let's say allow four minutes each, starting with Emily Lau. Thank you. I'd like to thank all the deputations and individuals for coming here on this Saturday afternoon to give us your views. We understand that you are very, very concerned about this issue, and I believe all of you have noted that our, more, our meeting actually started from 9 a.m. this morning, and the chairman said that we will be going until past the hour of 7 p.m. because there will be another session yet after this one. I think we have clearly uh, heard your views. Some people are in favor of the government's proposal, but there are also people who objected strongly. Some people mentioned the reclamation projects pre earlier and that we've all benefited from those projects. Uh, in those earlier days, uh, reclamation was not so controversial. We must understand that the times are changing and the people's expectations are also higher now. Uh, when it comes to public policy, the government should try its best to come to a consensus before it can proceed. Otherwise, uh, the government will, ha will be dredging its feet. Unfortunately, the Secretary is not able to listen to you for this session, but he said that even if he's not here, his, his, his officers will <coughs> uh, uh, take back the views that you've uh, um, given us today. I understand that those who 
uh, in the uh, in the relevant professions are in support of the government proposal. But even the engineers are, uh, are reminding government to be careful. And many members of the public have also said indicated that uh, while reclamation. Well, they will say that the government is saying that the reclamation is the easiest option. That's why the government is choosing this option. The, uh, well, but the deputation, many of the deputations are saying that it should be the last resort because of the, the serious damages caused, uh, whether it's damages uh, on the, so So they keep saying, uh, they say that they think that there, there are still a lot of land yet that could be put to use. Uh, the Secretary sort of responds to this question during the uh, morning session. I hope the officials will try your best to explain to them if they think that uh, uh, that uh, what they suggest are wrong. For example, one of the allegations is why there's so much land laying idle and you're not using it. Uh, could you go for redevelopment and land resumption? And also the issue relating to village houses. Many members of the public are telling us that the majority of us don't have this right. Why is it that the, 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 such people have uh, the right to village house development? Well, this is you know a legacy of history. And some people also saw why, ask why the law is enforced differently in the NT compared with the urban area. Uh, you may not need to resolve all the problems at once, but when this proposal put forward, the public is putting a lot of pressure on us, suggesting that we should endorse it like in, in this manner. Uh, although the government is not saying that it will go straight for reclamation, they just want to apply for some funds to conduct studies. And what's the point of these studies unless they want to go for reclamation? If we even agreed on the matters of principle, how, why should we go into these technical studies? Could the officials please explain to the Kai Fongs uh, the government's position? Permanent Secretary. Please be brief. We still have time yet. I hope that we will be able to arrive at a consensus, but I don't think we will be able to arrive at a 100% consensus. Some uh, speakers mentioned that we're using reclamation as the only uh, source of increasing land supply. That's not right. The Hong Kong SARG always <clears throat> you know, proposed that we should go for the six-pronged approach to increase land supply. Some speakers have mentioned that the other options are, for the other options we are encountering major difficulties. For example, the Northeast NT development is a large scale development involving land reclamation, uh, you know, changing the use of open storage space or you know, resuming private land and we are encountering many difficulties. So we need to adopt a multi pronged approach and reclamation is the easiest way to obtain a larger piece of land and that was mentioned many times. So we need a flexible, uh, uh, you know, land supply system that can come, and the various options should be able to complement each other. Why? Well, where earlier there was a question, uh, which, which was that, uh, well, people are asking whether we're still land uh, which has not yet been used, and I think Mr. Emily Lau also uh, asked the same question. Perhaps you may need to explain this point uh, more clearly later on, Albert Ho. Or Mr. Ho Jun Yin, rather. Thank you. I've heard many of these uh, individuals objecting to uh, reclamation. As a representative of the fishery and agricultural uh, sector, I am I I am inclined to uh, to object to uh, uh, reclamation. But I don't want to you know state my position yet. I want the government to convince me. Uh, 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 Earlier, when the government, you know, implemented its policies, they talk about our fisher resources and the, uh, which has been uh, reduced because of the discharges from the neighboring district. Our oceans are polluted. Secondly, you say the fishermen are overfishing, and thirdly, there's a lot of marine uh, uh, works going on. In the midst of those in support and against the proposal, you passed the 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 the, the uh, decision. You made the decision to ban trawling. And now you're proposing, uh, while well, we made the sacrifice, you're proposing to do something to the sea. Last time, the Environmental Bureau asked the same question. They say that there's an mechanism coordination between the Development Bureau and the Environmental Bureau. And there were also disputes between the two, but you're not disclosing that. So could you tell us what you have done in terms of how you can protect the fishery resources and the resources in the ocean? And secondly, after you've uh, uh, reclaimed the land and you use the land to build housing, uh, uh, the government, the, the people of Hong Kong will, will, will indirectly benefit. 
uh, because they can buy the properties. But for the fishermen who are direct victims, you're not telling us what we will gain from these reclamation projects. What if you told me that after the, rec the reclamation is completed, there will be more fishes or in the sea for us to catch or something else? And you can also convince the green groups how uh, after reclamation uh, the, is finished, the, uh, the ocean um, uh, environment will be better. Regarding the choice of reclamation near the shore, including the midwater reclamation proposal. In the course of selecting the potential sites, we've looked at 100, uh, uh, 1,100 uh, uh, kilometers of land. Uh, we said that the ecological value in the eastern waters are higher, and to the eastern part of the territory, a large part of the area are country parks. So to go for reclamation to the east will mean that we have many problems uh, to resolve, and even the uh, transportation uh, uh, infrastructures we build will affect the country parks. That's why we're giving up the uh, north, the, the eastern waters. Uh, in the western part, there will be less uh, uh, areas with uh, high ecological value. So we will consider, you know, uh, where we will build the artificial island. For the western waters, the sites that we've chosen uh, also have a low ecological value. We've actually conducted ecological studies and we've confirmed that it has a lower uh, ecological value be before we decided to choose a site. And the site chosen is also quite r remote from the uh, fish farming area. Uh, Chairman, I don't have very much time. You say that for the, the resor resources to the east and the different are, are not the same. In, to the west, you have the six major projects, plus a new ri runway and five sites of reclamation. You have more than 10 uh, uh, projects in the western waters. I'm not saying that, the, uh, that the, if the area has less resource, natural resources, you, then you will damage it. I'm, I'm asking you how you can, you know, coordinate with environment, uh, the Environment Bureau to ensure that uh, there will be more resources. We said that the ecological value of the western waters are, uh, are, are lower and is more remote from the fish farming areas. We will certainly conduct an EIA uh, to look at the, uh, the, the impact of all the projects in the western waters on the uh, ecology there. We've also mentioned that we will use the ecological shoreline so that after reclamation uh, we can uh, restore the, 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 the marine ecology after the works have been completed. Ellen Liao. First of all, I'd like to thank all the deputations and individuals for sacrificing this Saturday afternoon and come here to give us your views. Uh, I can also uh, uh, briefly explain the position of the Civic Party. If you want to reclaim outside of Victoria Harbour, the government will have to convince us that there's no other option before you can do that. As the chairman said, and also many deputations have pointed out that indeed at the moment uh, we're not yet convinced that there are no other land available. If you say, for example, a lot of the land in the new territories are used as uh, you know container storage yards and are used for open storage. So a lot of land has been put aside. Uh, and you claim that they will be reserved for people who exercise the right to build village houses. So the government has not uh, convinced us that it has, resort, it has exhausted all possible alternatives. So the civil party, like the majority of the deputations present for this session, have reservations. With the time that is left, I'd like to ask the few deputations who have expressed their support for the government's proposal to go for uh, reclamation to enhance our land supply, I'd like them to uh, further explain whether they know that the government now has a new measure which has never been resorted to before. That is, all of a sudden, the, the government has put available some land for which the land ha the, the purpose has not been planned. So they would like to have the land first and, they don't, and decide how to put it to use later on. So I'd like to ask whether or not the government has no other options or resort. And secondly, do you accept this uh, uh, approach that before the land use is, uh, uh, it's, uh, has been decided and you would first uh, uh, go for reclamation to create the land? 
So who would like to respond to that question? Yes. I've also think about in projects uh, involving uh, the development of new towns. Uh, in the early days in Taub, Sha Tin and Tai Po, along the coastal areas like Man Shan, there was reclamation. Uh, because it was it was based what project was based on uh, on on a plan to build new towns, the government now doesn't have the sufficient support to to to, to develop a large new town, so the proposal for reclamation are sporadic here and there. That is, it's not the same as to develop new towns in 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 the old days. So you say that there is no designated use. I think when we developed our new towns in the in the past, we only had an outline uh, uh, zoning plan at a time, uh, without uh, so. But so so in, in essence, I think the approach is more or less the same as the approach adopted f uh, for the development of new towns uh, several decades ago. Uh, to answer Mr. Leung's question, I propose that we should have an application list system uh, that exactly re uh, would answer Mr. Leung's question. All the officials present, they are not the people who are going to use the land. They propose that show us to be used for logistics. So where is the representative of the logistics industry? It should be the representative of the logistics industry to answer Mr. Leung's question. In other words, if we could have this application list system, so that the stakeholders can can then respond to the objectors, and the stakeholders can explain their reasons as to why they want to go ahead with a project, uh, and answer your questions. Thank you, Ms. Kwok. Thank you for coming here to share with us your views. Can you hear me? Thank you. We understand that there's a lot of demand for the government to increase land supply as soon as possible in order to stay, help stabilize property prices. On the other hand, we've heard a lot of uh, voices objecting to reclamation. I think the government should provide us with more information to help us make our analysis. The various sites that you propose uh, are controversial in different ways, and there are people who are for and against that proposal. Take Sha Tin, for example. It's a, already a very mature district, although it's a, um, uh, well, it's been a new town for many years, but properties are still being built in Sha Tin. The population is already very intensive, and many residents have already told you that there are, uh, there are, there's already a shortage of uh, uh, facilities like hospitals, it's, it's traffic is heavily congested and so on. With all these issues unresolved, and now you are proposing to reclaim a piece of land, not very large piece of land, to to resolve the housing problem. You say that you will not build uh, more buildings along the coastal area, so you can only build, you know, shorter buildings. And if you're going to build short uh, structures or buildings, how can you resolve the housing problem? If you cannot resolve the housing problem and you want to go for recommendation, how can you convince local people? If you want people to make a sacrifice, you need to have good justification. So apparently, it's very difficult for us to accept your proposal to 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 reclaim land in the area. So I'd like to know what is the government's town planning policy? What was the original population targeted for Sha Tin? And how many people do you intend Sha Tin to... To, to accommodate, and what would be the difference on the population uh, uh, with, uh, with and without reclamation? I think reclaim before planning is not correct. I'd like to first respond to this uh, claim. What well, we are now only conducting a study on reclamation, and after which we would conduct a land uh, use study. Uh, the government is not proposing that immediately we will uh, uh, con uh, have reclamation or at any particular site because we have not finished the consultation yet. During the last three sessions, many members and deputations have uh, alluded to the point that there has not been sufficient consultation. For land development projects, including the large scale one, large scale ones last a long period of time. That is from consultation to actual implementation is a long process and in every stage with public engagement and information covered 
will vary a great deal in terms of depth and breadth. Now, we're only in a conceptual stage, that is an initial stage when we propose reclamation. We're now consulting the public, and I emphasize a number of times we have to map out the scope of reclamation. Otherwise, we won't be able to do planning. So after defining the scope of reclamation, we can do planning. So we're now doing public consultation. We asked members of the public in their respective districts what improvements they want, what prerequisites are there for improvement. We'll embrace all these opinions in our planning process and we'll consult the public again. At the last session, I mentioned the opinion that reclamation should only be the last resort, but I emphasize that we should adopt a multi-pronged approach to the ecology, to society, any approach will have an impact, so we have to strike a balance. Well, I'll give another chance to you later. Next, uh, Mr. Kenneth Chan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to thank the deputations and members of the public for attending this public consultation session. I'll present some of my views first uh, before inviting the deputations or individuals to respond. Now we're in 2013. We're not in the last century when we're under colonial rule. We should not uh, base our ideas and concepts on the past. In the past, uh, we're a fishing village, etc., etc. We're told today that we should have solidarity and harmony. We should have the so-called line rock spirit uh, back in those days. We should embrace the development potentials. As the Bureau said, a lot has have to be done in terms of public consultation. Today, many young participants of new ideas and concepts. In the last century, we did not have uh, disciplines related to biodiversity. In the past, uh, the university structure is very different, and now we have uh, different levels of participation on the part of the public. First of all, I have to support uh, Mr. Alan Leong. Well, to put the cart before the horse, was the most commonly cited idiom today. Before we enhance our land supply strategies, we're already talking about reclamation. For example, we don't have a demographic strategy. We don't have a housing strategy. Before we know all these pretexts, we should not talk about reclamation, whether or not it is one of the six-pronged approaches or the last resort. It's very difficult to proceed with this information. Given our limited time, I'd like to invite, for example, the young people from the Hong Kong University to say something about the government's proposition that it should do something for the younger generations. Now, you're a student, you're in the academic sector, you're studying in the university. So what sort of opportunities do you see in the government's proposal? Ms. To, I'm only a student. We do have res aspirations about the environment. We're interested in ecology. That's why we chose this discipline. In the course of our studies, we continuously observed that what we possess, the ecology, animals, etc., were impacted upon. 
We did study the trawl ban, for example. Reclamation will impact on our ecology. The question is, should we, just for the sake of satisfying our needs, damage the ecology? We're also organisms. Is our value above uh, that of other organisms? Now, marine ecology will be affected by reclamation. I have to point out that the number of uh, Chinese white dolphins is dropping, for example. Our marine ecology will be affected. Corals and other marine organisms will be affected. How will they be affected by reclamation? If the EIA report says that they'll be affected, what should we do? Should we just because of our needs continue with this plan? Thank you. I noted that two other members would like to ask questions. Mr. Gary Fan and Ms. Chen Yun Han. Due to time constraints, if you don't mind, I suggest that I give you three minutes each for making comments and asking questions. After you have spoken, I ask the administration to respond in one go. Because we have another session, we have to grasp our time well. So first, to Mr. Gary Fan. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I raised my hand rather late. I'd like to thank the deputations and individuals for coming to have exchanges with us. We seriously look at this consultation document which presents different methods for increasing land supply. I cannot 100% agree to all the remarks made. Just now we heard that sometimes we might have to be sacrificed. Well, I think we have to look at the specifics. That's why members said that planning is necessary before deciding on reclamation. Mr. Yao Kim Wu is from an alliance in the New Territories. He mentioned the enhancement of planning for rural and urban areas. You mentioned opposition to Hong Shui Ku, anti northeast buildings with screening effect, etc. You said that we could not have the best of both worlds, and you asked for practicable suggestions. Well, Maliu Shui was mentioned. Why did you not mention the impact on Maliu Shui? We should have a balanced approach. There are these uh, suggestions that land developers would benefit in the end. Now, all these are related to planning for the urban and rural areas. So would you please respond as well? Now, the government has hoarded uh, 1,200 hectares of low-density land for the construction of small houses, for the development of the rural areas. The government is not committed to develop these low-density land for the indigenous villagers. So the government can actually make use of those land sites by giving them a higher building height restriction. So do we really need the 1,200 hectares for small houses? If somebody is to be sacrificed for the enhancement of the urban and rural areas, Mr. Yao, will you oppose the suggestion? You only have 20 odd seconds. I'd like to listen to the response of the officials first. Next, Ms. Chen Yun Han. Mr. Chairman, first of all, I'd like to thank the deputations. I asked a question in session two, but did not get an answer. Just now, I went out to, to handle something else. My opinion is like this. In Hong Kong, well, <laughs> I'm talking to the officials. In Hong Kong, we 
resented certain incidents in the past. Some people told me, including those from the construction industry, that uh, there were wrong demolition projects. For example, the walled city. Even a former official from the Bureau told me that we should not have totally cleared the walled city. To be fair, please tell me, in the first phase of 2011 consultation, six aspects were mentioned. I believe one aspect is retained in this consultation exercise. Tell us how much land we have to develop marine resources, rural land, and deserted land. You have to give us more data. I asked Mr. Paul Chan, the Secretary for Development. Together with others, I went up to ask him how much land reserve we need. Up to this moment, he is unable to give me the answer. Well, if all approaches are interrelated, we need to prepare for future needs. I don't oppose that. But you have to tell me all the aspects involved. It's just like uh, redeveloping the old areas. The sim the principle is the same as that for the clearance of the walled city. The permanent secretary said that the Dutch Co should give him money for these projects. But then we don't know the whole picture. So it's difficult for you to convince us that we should give you money. In particular, the undersecretary should have uh, heard of the three angry brothers who were engaged in farming this morning. Well, this morning, they did not answer me. Then I'll ask the administration to respond. I'll give the administration five minutes. Uh, I'll give the permanent secretary five minutes. I'd like to sincerely thank the members of the public who have come here for this discussion. One point was raised in all the three sessions. That is, we must have a demographic policy first before we talk about reclamation. Is it that we should have a demographic policy first before having reclamation? Should we stop anti-Northeast Hong Shui Q and anti-North studies now? Land is a precious resource. First of all, we have to manage demand. At the same time, we need to manage supply. Demographic development, economic demands, livelihood demands, social facilities, etc., are demands, and we need to manage them. We have uh, to have uh, statistics for projection, but these statistics won't remain stable. They will change with policies and uh, the circumstances. If we wait for demographic data before doing planning, we will, will never be able to catch up with statistics. It's only when statistics become history that they remain stable. The next aspect is Supply management. We never said that we'll just rely on reclamation. We must have a multi-pronged approach because every approach has its constraints. In Hong Kong, all land supply approaches will meet with different degrees of difficulty. So now we have to start studying such that we have sufficient land reserve. I have to emphasize that with the land reserve, it doesn't mean that I need to start reclamation now, because before we start the works, we need to know a lot of things in terms of land planning, land demand, and so forth. But if we do not work out the demands, we'll never be able to supply sufficient land to meet our demand. Let me repeat once again that for this suggestion that reclamation should only be a last resort, uh, as I said, uh, in the past eight to ten years, we stopped reclamation. So reclamation had already become a last resort, not just a last resort. Uh, we stopped it completely. In 2007, 400 hectares of land uh, were reclaimed in Toishan 
Taishan with uh, our fills. So if we do not conduct studies now and be prepared, this land shortage will only be brought into the future. Next, I'd like to talk about consultation. Our colleagues have done a lot about consultation. Of course, at this stage, uh, there's not much information we can supply because we ourselves have to conduct detailed studies before we can provide technical details, etc. After this consultation exercise, the first step we want to do is to do detailed technical studies for some of the reclamation sites. Then for land planning and land resources, we'll consult the public again with the latest information for site selection, whether or not a site is suitable for public or private housing is uh, premature because we don't yet have the data and plans. We must study the accumulative effect on demographic growth, ventilation, pollution, infrastructure, etc. have to be studied. With all those information in place, we'll share them with the public. As for the Maliu Shoi site proposed, we clearly know that uh, the local communities there have strong views. We should not just talk about sentiments and emotions. We must have objective studies with it. Data collected will be able to study objectively the possible impacts in future. We'll continue to communicate uh, with the public uh, and consult them. Permanent Secretary, perhaps you should take note of one point. Some members are rather concerned about uh, the existing land supply. That is disregarding the proposed reclamation sites. How much land is available for development at present? The information was provided in the past, but recently questions were asked about supply. So can we have some information from you in relation to land available for short-term development because many members of the public are concerned about this. Just now we heard many deputations and individuals say that they agree or disagree to reclamation. For those who disagree to reclamation, they'd like to know whether there are alternative choices. So the government should give us more information. In fact, we are overrun. Thank you very much for attending. Let's take a break of a few minutes. Please come back at 4.55. Thank you.